You guys look really happy. Meanwhile, that's it. She doesn't smile like this anymore. Not for Dad. At least not lately. It's like she's just going through the paces, you know? Not really living. I, I mean, it's not just her. It's adults. Adults in general, they're just so... <laughs> so tuned out. Like they're sleepwalking. I don't ever want to be like that. I'd rather die than be complacent with my life. Hi, I'm Anna Wright, and I'm here with Joe Keller uh, for the Gig Spotting Network, and he is a local director in the area who will be talking to us today about some of his upcoming projects, past projects, and pretty much his inspiration to get into the biz. Thank you so much for taking time. Thank you for having me. Um, so, uh, directing, do you do anything else? Producing or cinematography, uh, anything that we should yeah, mention? Yeah, yeah, so... Um, my main thing is directing and writing. I guess mostly writing, because directing costs money to pay people, right? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, writing, directing, editing, um, shooting. I do a couple, I do commercial projects on the side for folks locally um, as part of my side business. Okay. But mostly uh, writing and directing. That's my, my passion, <laughs> if you will. Okay, and have you, has it always been a passion? Like, did you go to school specifically? I sure did, yeah. So I, uh, I started out, um, I guess when I was a young kid, really liking art and drawing. So Star Wars was a big influence as it, on me as it was a lot of people. And I, I started drawing uh, because of Star Wars. You know, I wanted to draw Luke Skywalker and Stormtroopers yeah. and stuff, right? And uh, so I got into comic books. And I, I found comic books was a really good foundation for the visual medium. It kind of, you have to understand framing. You have to understand how to tell a story uh, sequentially. So from that, um, probably about the when I was 12, 13, I started shooting... Uh, films with my dad's video camera. You know, sh just little short things, mm -hmm. editing it together with the VCR type stuff. And uh, I ended up going to uh, University of Michigan for undergrad and they had, I went to talk to my counselor. She's like, you know, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, when I was in high school, I like to act, I like to direct plays. You know, I like to do art, I like to make music. She's like, well, have you thought about going in our film program? I said, you guys think you can do that? <laughs> you have a film program? Yeah. That's something people actually study, you know? So I, I um, embarked on the, the film studies program at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and it was a great program. Um, one of my professors uh, wrote, wrote the film Renaissance Man and uh, Mighty Ducks uh, won. Um, Adam Hertz, who wrote American Pie, went to, went to under, Michigan nice. undergrad. Um, a lot of the folks who went there are now uh, writing for different television shows. One of my friends just had a, uh, an episode of Person of Interest um, that, that played and uh, they're just doing all kinds of different stuff out there. So That's great. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's, it's nice to know that <laughs> those people and, and to see kind of how they how they've ascended in their career so far. It's been a lot of hard work. But undergrad at Michigan, shot a bunch of Super 8 films, you know, and uh, sunk a bunch of money into 16 millimeter film. That um, so m the name of my company is Grounded Pictures, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why is that in, in Michigan. Um, I was shooting a 16 millimeter film on black and white stock and because of the way the black and white stock was set up, if, if you don't ground yourself before you touch it, you, you basically the static electricity ruins the stock. Gotcha. So my entire film was ruined because whoever was doing the developing didn't ground themselves. So Kodak told me I needed to ground my camera that it wasn't their fault with their film, they wouldn't reimburse it. And then Photochem told me that you know they couldn't do anything about it. So probably about you know three thousand dollars worth of film stock wow. was just ruined <laughs> for a poor you know college guy yeah so I kind of thought saw the irony in that and called my company grounded pictures so that's kind of you know but yeah then I went to graduate school uh, Loyola Marymount um, for my MFA in film production and uh, that was more of a film production than my undergrad was really film studies mm -hmm. understanding theory, you know, film theory, and building on that I went to my into graduate school, shot three films there, including my thesis film which was called Stitch, um, and the wow. actors from that have ended up doing pretty well, guys on the, really going on his bike over there. They um, really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, it, the education part of it, I'm, I wish I could be in school all the time. Yeah. Right? So.
long answer to your <laughs> your question. That's good. But yeah. good. Um, now, as far as you're mentioning, like as far as studying film study or film production, mm -hmm. what uh, would you expand a little more? Like, what uh, for people that are maybe even thinking of going into that school? Like, what are they going to be into for the first few years, and then do you sure. get down to the real nitty gritty? Like, get a camera in your hand type right, of deal. Right. Right. So, so Michigan, for example, I mean, uh, number one, Ann Arbor is a great place to go to school. It's a very eclectic place, and um, film studies are really focused on you know exposing you to the theory behind film. So. Um, it, it gets down to even the concepts of psychology and why people react certain way mm -hmm. to uh, to the visual image, right, and to sound. So um, you get into things like the concepts of diegetic and non-diegetic sound. Diegetic sound of the diegesis uh, or or of the film, meaning that it's in it's real. It's it's like the sound we hear right now, mm -hmm. right? Non-diegetic sound being something that's like uh, the soundtrack, right, the music. So. Um, you learn concepts like that, and then you, you begin to kind of have an appreciation for different directors. So me, personally, my favorite films are all French New Wave films. Francois Truffaut, Jean-Luc Godard, uh, films like Shoot the Piano Player, Breathless, um, um, uh, Band Apart, which is in incidentally what Tarantino's company is named after, this mm -hmm. film, A Band Apart, um, or Band of Outsiders, excuse me. And what these what these people did, these French New Wave directors, why I love them so much, is they were based on film theory. They were cinephiles. So Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard um, had written for this magazine called Cahiers du Cinema, and which was basically, they, they loved film. And they wrote about everybody's film. Eric Romer, they wrote about books, Baz, uh, Bazin, I always say his name wrong, Andre Bazin. Um, and out of that, they took all this theory and they applied it to their films, right? So when you look at something like um, uh, the film Shoot the Piano Player, there's a lot of times where they're, they mix up the diegesis. So what I mean by that is, um, well, a better example is um, is uh, Melville's uh, uh, Bob the Gambler, Bob Le Flambeur. Mm -hmm. It's a French New Wave film. Starts off, you see this guy rolling dice. He's a gambler, and you hear this music, like xylophone music, and you think it's the soundtrack. And then he walks through a room, and a guy's playing xylophone music. It's just kind of they like to play with the, the whole okay. medium, right? So anyway. Film, th film theory is sort of that exposure. So exposing you to all these different films and different concepts behind film, um, why framing works, why it doesn't, um, proximity, mise-en-scene, all those things. And bringing that then in my graduate school career into how do you actually use those things to create a film. So getting back to your question, <laughs> um, I, I think film theory is an incredibly important part of understanding cinema. Um, if you have an appreciation for film, um, like one of my friends, Chris Gervais, you know, has an amazing appreciation for film. You could probably quote about everything that Steven Spielberg's ever done. Oh yeah. And and uh, you know, Chris has taken that. That's his film theory study, and he's applied that to his films. And I think if you have an appreciation for it, if you have a deep love of it, you're going to study it, understand it, and then be able to apply that to some of your own work. So I think it's incredibly value for, valuable for people to take classes, even if it's something as simple as film appreciation, mm -hmm. but to begin, be, begin understanding the concepts so that it's not just somebody with a camera, right? It's, you're not just shooting a camera and not really knowing what you're doing. I think there's value in that as well um, because there's very raw emotion in that often, but I think having the, the background and the concepts of what makes film work, you know, the machine underneath the hood, mm -hmm. I think that really helps. So I, I recommend it for folks. What's your problem? I don't have a problem. Like hell you don't. You can't tell the difference between a brown tie and a black one. Have you met the artist Clayton Ardebon? Clayton Ardebon? Clayton Ardebon? Nice to meet you. And this is Mr. Hewlett and his lovely wife. Now as far as like the type of let's say film theory that maybe inspired what you do nowadays, do you have a particular I guess, me, uh, not medium, but um, subject that you like to kind of pull from, or do you find that you're just kind of see things in everyday life and you're like, I want to I do something about that, or I want to make something right. about that, or I like that person's perspective, I want to take a movie and do something like maybe that, or... Right, you mean like how kind, of, you, kind of inspiration? Yeah, what, how do you get your tries? inspiration from it? Is it watching others well, type I'll, of things, I'll, or is it just yeah. kind of organic? Yeah, I mean, I think, well... I mean, candidly, I think, you know, I've gone through t 
times in my life where I've just struggled on knowing what I want to shoot. Just, it's kind of that idea of, I mean, it's almost like a, a, an infant when they want to do something and they start crying because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, there's been times where I've been just like, I don't know what I want to write about. I just want to shoot something, right? And, and that's good, but it, I think, you know, kind of to your, the point of your question, what's the inspiration, right? And for me, it comes from all different places. I mean, my, my latest script, which I'm reviewing and getting coverage on, How to Jump Out of a Moving Car, it focuses on um, really things that are personal to me, things that have happened in my life, and trying to share those with other people. Because I think film is an amazing medium for, it, you actually become the third person, right? You are the person in the film to some extent. You, you're supposed to associate with the protagonist. Yeah. And by doing that, I think you're able to share experience. So for me, I mean, whether it's something like, um, you know, Goonies, uh, or uh, something like Magnolia by P uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, there is some human element there. So my inspiration comes from relationships that I make day to day, things that really piss me off <laughs> that I want to do something about, and then these moments that I have where, you know, like I'll be just walking or, or running and just thinking about the sun through the trees and about how, wow, I never take the time to look up, you know? And my life is so busy that I don't get the time to look up, you know? Things like that, little things like that can be threads for producing a narrative for mm -hmm. me, right? And so, um, yeah, I think a lot of it comes from the films I watch, but I think drama and dramedy are my two favorite genres. Okay. So. Fun. Now, you mentioned uh, how to, was it how to throw yourself from a moving car? No, how to, <laughs> yeah, how to, how to throw yourself, that would be good. How to jump out of how a moving car. How to jump out of a moving right. car, okay. Right. Well, let's talk a little about that, because you said it's, it's upcoming, it's definitely something new you're working on. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so how to jump out of a moving car is, is about the concept that a lot of times in our lives. It's a fantastic title, Thank by you. the way, I love Thanks. that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's, it's the idea that a lot of times in our lives we're where it's like we're in a moving car racing down the highway at like 85 miles per hour and there's all this baggage, right? There's all these decisions that we've made that, are, that create that momentum in our life, right? And the faster you go and the more you get stuck in that specific path, you start realizing that the only way for me to get out of this is to freaking jump out of this, you know, jump out of this car. And when you do, when you've been in some part of your life for so long, so much life experience has been building that momentum, jumping out is going to hurt like hell, right? Yeah. It is going to be like jumping out of a moving car. If you smack the pavement, it's, it's a wake-up call. So whether it's, you know, um, a, a guy who's stuck traveling for his day job and misses his family and starts feeling disconnected from them, but he needs the money to live the lifestyle he's living, whether it's a, a girl, a teenage girl, who finds herself pregnant and her mom wants her to have an abortion and she doesn't want to do it, right? Whether it's... Um, you know, a, a young, upcoming um, female business person who's trying to get climb that ladder and kind of loses perspective for why she wants to do that. I mean, these are the types of characters that the film's about. And, you know, me personally, you know, um, I work in corporate America by day because, you know, I can't afford to dump a lot of money into, into film without having money to dump into it, right? Right. So, you know, whereas my side business pays for buying new equipment and things of that nature, it just goes right back into the business. My day job keeps a roof over my, my head, over my wife's head, over my son's head. And what I be begin to realize is, you know, my wife and I went through kind of a rough period, rough patch. And it was because we were both caught up in that momentum of our lives. We weren't talking. We were stuck in this routine. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be incredibly damaging to people. So the film is really about um, looking at how our lives are informed by our past experience and how we might go about changing those without having to jump out of a car. How do you tap the brake and get off at the exit, right? Gotcha. So, um, and the film follows a, uh, I should say this film, this will be film, the screenplay, follows a, um, the main character is a guy, late 30s, you know, like I said, kind of my experience <laughs> traveling a lot, um, who just becomes disconnected from his wife and it's kind of is on the fringes of having an affair. I didn't do that though. And, uh, and you know, what happens? And what happens to his wife who just starts trying to fill the hole in her life by going into debt, by using credit cards to buy things and to worry about how she looks to other people. Right. It becomes this empty sort of me method of fulfillment and they just start diverging in their path to the extent that um, 
you know, finally they have to have this come to Jesus and, hey, why, do we want to go forward with this or not? So I think a lot of the, the, vile, the, the uh, bile and venom that comes from relationships sometimes, um, I think that's fueled from people not talking. And so there's a lot of not talking in the film, talking about something that they're not talking about, right? Okay. So, yeah, so that's the, that's the whole concept. I'm just trying to get that ready for some pre-production and get some investment funds into it. Well, that so. sounds great. Yeah. I mean, definitely relatable. I'm sure every single person can think of a time where, yeah, I really would have liked to jump out of that car yeah, or right. something. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. so it's focusing more along the lines of, just going along with the actual car analogy, um, they're theoretically still in it. They're, right. they're in. Yes. They're on the highway. They're like they see the exit that they'd love to be off on. Right. But currently, they're still working to try and change anything to be able to get there. That's right. Okay. That's right. Kind of caught up in that momentum and, and not able, not talking about it, not jumping out of the car. Right. Trying to, I guess, maybe figuring out that they're. Is it like just them figuring out that they're having this? Yeah. And then so kind of, what do they do to? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that resolve it. It's it's about a lot of it's about not communicating. So the film follows uh, two parallel paths. One is th this guy I talked about. The other is his neighbor, who is their babysitter, who is the girl who is actually um, is pregnant, and her mom has forced her to get an abortion just because of hey, you're going to ruin your life, this kind of stuff. And she takes an interest in, in the family and in, in this guy's family. She's a, she likes to take photographs, so she kind of starts taking photographs of them. And through their interaction, um, he remembers what it's like to kind of have, be young and have all of your opportunities ahead of you. And she sees what it's like to be an adult and to have to take responsibility. And I mean, the big twist at the end is that you know, she hasn't had the abortion. She's kept the kid and there's a big accident that happens and kind of like a, a, a um, a, a connection and um, of all these different characters kind of coming together, a la like Robert Altman or P.T. Anderson is what I'm, you know, aspiring to anyway. But it's it's a it's a drama and it's it's very it's there's a lot of emotion in it. I'll say mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and, and this this couple in particular um, coming to the realization that they just don't talk to each other, that they want to love each other the way they used to love each other, and they just don't know how. You know, a broken relationship. And I think a lot of people have been there. Yeah. You know, you're in a relationship, you have so much invested in that relationship, and it's so hard to let go, or it's so hard to face it for the reality of what it is. So that's the idea. That sounds great. Thanks. And you said that it's, uh, it's currently just, a, just in the, the written stage. Yeah, so I finished, uh, I finished the first draft of the screenplay um, in January. I, I, it's an idea I'd been working on for a long time, and then over the course of three days, I wrote like 80 pages. It was nuts. Like, I don't do that. That's when inspiration not, hits, yeah, there it right. is. Yeah, right. And so um, I've gotten some favorable coverage on it from some different agencies, and I'm just trying to tweak and, and uh, adjust according to their coverage and their recommendations. So um, from that stage, what I like to do, I'm, I'm as most folks locally here as well, I'm big into pre-production. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to begin doing storyboards for it as part of collateral material um, for uh, pitching it to investors. Um, so I'm in the investment stage of pulling together a private placement memorandum, PPM, that allows people to invest in it. And given some of the, um, the changes recently in um, some of the laws, I'm able to solicit people directly instead of having people solicit me. Mm -hmm. So there's there's always been this issue with being able to go after investment funds outside of something like Kickstarter or, Ind or um, what is the other one? I can't remember it. Anyways, if you're going through one of those websites where people aren't really getting anything, they're not really investors, you can do it all you want. Mm -hmm. When you get to this thing that you really are getting investors in your film, you have to, um, there were laws about being able to solicit them and those are gone or sort of changed mm -hmm. to where it's going to be a lot easier for me to go after the, those funds. So. Okay. Great. So you're looking to get into production at some point yeah, this year yeah. or next um, year? I'm looking to try to shoot this in the first quarter of uh, 2013. Okay. So um, over the course of the next three to four months, I'll be finishing up, um, tightening up the script, pulling together storyboards for probably, I don't know, four, four to ten of the major scenes. Um, pulling together a website, and it, you know, Chris Gervais has pulled together a great song that's kind of going to be the my inspiration for the website. I guess sleeps and great songs happen. It's uh, it, he's, like I said, he's a renaissance man, that guy. So yeah, he, he wrote a song called Fiction. Um, he read the script, and then out of the script, wrote the song like immediately thereafter. 
and there's a lot of references to the script within the song I think like at least emotionally um, and tangentially to where it I think it's just an awesome song and uh, I want to use it on the website so and in the film so right. cool. yeah You look a lot like a machine. 